Just as your car has indicators to let you know when the engine is getting overheated and needs to take a rest, we also have indicators in trading that let us know when the market is getting just a little too hot and needs to cool down or when it's the best time to put the pedal to the metal and put things into motion. Two such indicators that you might see in your automobile are the temperature gauge, which indicates overall general health of your engine, and the RPM gauge, which is a great short-term indicator when it's a good time to change gear so that the engine isn't necessarily overworked. So I like to compare the relative strength index, or the RSI, to the slower moving temperature gauge. However, today we'll be looking at the stochastic RSI as an important technical indicator that I compare with our RPM gauge. It has the ability to clue us in as the good times when to switch gears in our shorter term trading strategies and it's very effective to help us nail the best entries and exits for our trades. So join me today as we take the mystery out of this sometimes noisy yet helpful indicator and learn how to use it effectively in our trading strategies. And also I'll be sharing my own personal strategy of how to use these two indicators together, the stochastic RSI and the standard RSI, on multiple time frames to enable us to nail the best entries and exit when trading patterns or support and resistance areas. Welcome back to the Chart School series here at Road Dog Crypto. My name is Lane, and my goal is to help you develop one of the most rewarding skill sets that you can master, technical analysis, so that you can become a more profitable trader and investor. And I try to make this fun and interesting and always free. If you're not familiar with the RSI and how it works, please check out that video first as these two indicators kind of go hand in hand when it comes to figuring out the market. The regular RSI is a slower moving indicator, meaning that it's often lagging with this data. This means that it's not always reliable as a real time indicator as its peaks and valleys don't always coincide with the price action perfectly. Still, the regular RSI has enormous value when it comes to trading and investing. The stochastic RSI, however, is a faster indicator. However, the trade-off for that speed is that it's often very noisy and easily presents false moves. Now, using either indicator alone can give you a valuable insight with some degree of accuracy, but when you combine these two indicators together, there is a strange magical synergy that happens and suddenly the bigger picture starts making a whole lot more sense. The stochastic RSI and the regular RSI go together like peas and carrots. Similar to the slower moving RSI, the stochastic RSI is faster, a more short term indicator that measures a trend's momentum. Now it does this by comparing the current candle close to both the highest and the lowest closes during a particular time period, which by default is set to 14 candles. Typically, the stochastic RSI is composed of two lines, usually a red one and a blue one. Now, the blue line is known as the percent K line, which is the true value of the stochastic. The red line is known simply as the percent D line, and this is simply a three day moving average of the blue line. So these lines meander through a horizontal channel with a value range ranging from zero on the bottom to 100% at the top. And this channel is further defined by two lines that mark the 20% area and the 80% areas toward the top. These two areas are used to identify overbought and oversold conditions for the current time frame. Assets are considered to be overbought when the stochastic moves above the 80% line and indicates that the price trend is preparing to make a short term reversal. Now, likewise, when the stochastic RSI moves below the 20% zone, it indicates that the asset is oversold and that price action is preparing to make a short term move upward. The most basic trading strategy with the stochastic RSI is that the buy signals are created when the blue line crosses the red and both lines cross upward over the 20% line. And likewise, the sell signals are also created when the red line crosses the blue line after moving downward and crossing below the 80% line. However, this strategy alone is not always a dependable one and it will get you poor results. The key to using the stochastic RSI effectively is to realize that price does not always obey the overbought and oversold levels. Make sure you get this. It's important because sometimes during strong uptrends, the stochastic RSI can remain or get pinned to the overbought areas and they'll stay there. And the opposite also occurs in a strong downtrend where the indicator gets pinned below the 20% area. This occurs because the stochastic RSI is a fast indicator and fast indicators are vulnerable to false signals. Very important to catch that. So the biggest obstacle when using the stochastic RSI is to avoid acting on these false signals. And one method to avoid getting caught up with false signals from pin stochastics during a strong uptrend or downtrend is to simply ignore it. Yeah, you heard me. Ignore all that mess. During a true strong uptrend, the stochastic is best utilized to find the bottoms of short term retracements or corrections where the price is just taking a natural break to accumulate before moving upward. Now this works beautifully when you're trading the trend. Essentially, this helps you time when to buy the dips. 
Because during a true upward trend, we have the option of using oversold conditions of the stochastic RSI, falling below and crossing above the 20% area as an opportunity to enter a new position or add to a current one. Now, the opposite is true in a strong downtrend where the stochastic RSI is pinned to the bottom 20% area. So we just ignore all that and focus only on when it's in the overbought areas above 80% and presents a sell or a short signal as it crosses below that 80% level. The stochastic RSI isn't totally affected by itself, but when you use it along with either the regular RSI and or a couple of moving averages, it can become a precision tool to help you nail some of the best entries and exits for your positions. It's also possible to compare indicator readings across multiple time frames to better improve their effectiveness. Today, I'm going to share with you my simple time frame strategy using both the slower RSI and the faster stochastic RSI to identify trend reversals and determine the best times to enter or exit a trade. Now, I'll also be demonstrating how to use this strategy along with typical chart patterns that you may identify. Here's something that really struck home with me. It's not the tools that make the craftsman a master. It's the knowledge of how and when to use his tools that give him true mastery. All right, the stochastic RSI, if you don't have this on your chart, all you got to do is go up here to the indicator section, that little icon right there, and you can do a search for it. Just start typing it in, and there you got it, stochastic RSI. Put a little dot there, you'll put it into your favorites. And let me go ahead and add that to my chart. Now, I normally use the one that's on Market Cipher, and this is it right here. It's this purple line that I've got, and that's normally the one that I use to get my readings from, just because this is an all encompassing indicator. It has a bunch of indicators just all squeezed in together there. However, you'll see a lot of people just use the indicator by itself right here. And that's what we pulled up there. So you've got those two options. Now this market cipher option that I, I've got here is not actually the true market cipher. This is the VMC cipher works just as good. And what's best of all is that this one is totally free on trading view. So that's the one I recommend. I have great luck with it, but the regular stochastic is just fine. And actually for me, it's a little easier to read. The only reason that you don't see me using this is because it just takes up too much real estate on my chart space. Now for the strategy I'm going to show you today, we're going to start off with the bigger time frames because that's what we want to do. This is where you're going to get the best information. And for example, we'll just go down here to this area right here. All right, so I'm, I'm going back to the bottom area that we had from May of 2021 that lasted through July right there. And, you know, we can draw our patterns out as we see it. And then we're going to look at, well, when's the best time to get in this pattern? You could do it with the breakout. That's traditional breakout strategy where you would wait for it to break out of this line here, 33,142. Wait for a retest. The retest came in up here at this level. It really didn't come back to retest these lines. So it's possible to miss out on those if you're using the breakout strategy. So what some traders like to do is front run and they will buy toward the bottom of the pattern. Now this is a more advanced move and that's why we use a more advanced technique, which is what I'm showing you today. What I want to draw your attention to is that on this daily chart, our RSI is down at the bottom, right around 30. We like that. It's come up and it's come back down, made a new low. The trick is to finding the regular RSI at a low and also the stochastic RSI at its low, these areas right here. When you see confluence like that, both of them being at the low, that's your best signal that there is a big move getting ready to happen. Both of these indicators are at the bottom. The only place that we can go now is up. So that's your first clue. Now that we're on the daily, how to nail this move is that you would come down to a smaller time frame, preferably around the four hour. So we came down from the daily to the four hour. We're looking for the same thing. And that will be your entry signal. Stochastics RSIs are at a bottom and the regular RSIs are at a bottom. When you see them team up like that, that's your buy signal to get that very bottom. Now, furthermore, you could even take it down to a smaller time frame. Say from the four hour, you can go down to the one hour. So here I am on the one hour and I would be doing the same exact thing, making sure that my stochastics are at a bottom and my RSI is at a bottom to confirm a valid entry. When you see that happen across multiple time frames, from the daily to the four hour to the one hour, you can even use this down to the 15 minute to nail it even more precisely. Those are your best entries. That's an advanced method to find the best place to get in on your pattern without having to wait for the breakout. It also gives you a better risk to reward ratio since you're buying at the bottom, putting your stop losses below it, what you would be out of should this trade goes against you would be a lot less than if you'd bought up here at the breakout areas. So this is the excellent way to use these two indicators together on multiple time frames. Now I started with the larger ones, which I always recommend you do, but even if you're doing something short-term trading, day trading, scalp trading, you can use the one hour, this one, and the 15 minute and the five minute. Just make sure that when you enter your trade, your stochastics are at their low and 
the RSI is at the low and you're golden. Now, the same thing can be said for selling at the tops, right? So right here at our peak on Bitcoin, and I'm on the daily, we had a rising wedge. Now, we know that those will break down to the downside. The statistics on those are 68% of the time. Now, one strategy on this is to have your trend line drawn from the bottom. And if it breaks down below that trend line, you know that's the time to get out. But let's look and see what's going on with our stochastic RSIs. At each peak up here at the top, stochastics are topped out getting ready to come down. That's your signal. On the double top, same thing happens. Stochastic RSI is at the top at the 80% mark. RSI is above the 70% mark. That's your clue. Price is getting ready to come down. That could have been a good take profit point. Both of these points would be great take profit points and even get you out of the trade at a higher profit margin than waiting for it to break the trend line. The only downside is, you know, could it be like this and come down just a little bit and go up even higher? Possibility. But when you're taking profit and you're in trading or investing, you want to make sure that you're trying to get the tops as close as you can. Although that's not our ultimate goal, most of the money is made in between the middle. But using this technique with the stochastic RSI and the regular RSI at the peaks and the valleys on the charts, knowing when to use them to get into a trade and knowing when to use them to get out of a trade can make the hugest impact on your portfolio growth and development. These are some of the true secrets that people charge you hundreds or thousands of dollars to learn. And all this information is out there freely available if you're willing to look for it. And my goal is just to make it even easier to find. So if you found value in this video, please consider giving us a like, subscribe, leave a comment below, and I'm hoping that these things will help you master your crypto portfolio and change your life. Until next time, be blessed and remember, you got this baby. You're getting very wealthy and you like this video. You want to subscribe to this channel because you like it.